Erin Spain and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I made this DIY storage bench with an Aztec design. This is a little bit of a different design spin on the original version of this bench which I shared on my site a few years ago, so I'll be sure to link to that one as well as the written tutorial for this one in the description box below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comment section and if you haven't already, I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon to be notified of my future videos. Thank you so much for watching, let's get started. In addition to lumber, here are all the tools that I used for this project and I will list them all below and in my blog post. First I measured and cut two 2x12 boards down to 5 feet long each and I like to clamp a board or a speed square down to use as a guide just to make sure that I can get straight cuts with my circular saw. That is the face of a woman who just realized she accidentally cut a 2x10 instead of a 2x12. Just grabbed the wrong board from my lumber stash, so back to square one. I also cut four pieces of 2x12 each at 11 and 3 quarter inches long, and these will serve as the ends as well as the cubby dividers of the bench. For this project, I used my new DeWalt compact circular saw, which I love. My friends over at Home Depot sent this to me as part of the prospective program. You can find out more on my blog. I'll also add a cut list to the description box below with all the dimensions that I used. Then I sanded everything and I started with an 80 grit sanding disc on my orbital sander and then followed it up with 120 grit just to smooth everything out. Next, I drilled pocket holes into one end of each of the 11 and 3 quarter inch long boards. If you've never used pocket holes before, you can buy a pocket hole jig and it comes with all the components you need to create these pocket holes. First, you just clamp down the jig onto the board that you're working with and you adjust that as well as the collar on the drill bit that it comes with, depending on the thickness of the wood that you're working with. And then you just drill your holes. I love using pocket holes because they're a really easy way to join wood, which is great for beginners, and also you can't see the screws from the other side. So we're gonna be using our pocket hole screws to attach these pieces to what will eventually be the top of our bench. We're working upside down right now, so we won't be able to see the screws from the top of the bench once we flip everything over later. So next we're gonna swap out our drill bit with the long driver bit that comes with the pocket hole jig kit. And this bit has a square tip which matches the square screw heads on our two inch pocket hole screws, which is what I used for this project. First I attached the ends and then I went around and measured and marked to make sure that each of my cubby dividers were 18 inches apart. Then I carefully attached them using my new DeWalt compact impact driver and my two inch pocket hole screws. Next I attached the bottom of the bench, which appears to be the top right now, but remember we're working upside down. I attached it by pre-drilling holes using a countersinking drill bit, which allows the screw head to lie flush or just below the surface of the wood. This isn't completely necessary since you're not gonna be able to see it, so I didn't bother puttying over it like I normally would. But I used two and a half inch long wood screws for this, and again, I used my DeWalt impact driver. I used this pre-made project panel for the bottoms of the storage bins just because I had it on hand. I used them a lot for projects, but a 1x12 would work fine too. These are all the pieces I used to construct the storage bins and I'll add all of the dimensions to the description box below. I constructed the bins using wood glue and a crown stapler, but a brad nailer would work fine too. I also love using a silicone brush to spread the glue. And I tried really hard to keep everything square, but it's always a challenge of mine. It's just not something I'm great at. By the way, stay tuned to the end of this for some outtakes and you can see what happened when I was working really hard to keep this thing square. I added the sides first and then the front and the back last. And whether you're using a stapler or a brad nailer, just make sure that you have your depth set so that the staples or the nails countersink themselves so you can putty over them later. I used paintable wood filler to cover the staple holes and also to patch over any knots in the wood to prevent bleed through later on since I was painting everything. 
I painted everything using Bare Marquee Interior Latex Paint and Primer in the color White 52. If your paint does not have a primer built in, you're definitely going to want to use a good stain blocking primer first. I used a foam roller to apply it and then I used an angled brush to get into the corners and the nooks and the crannies. Before I painted the storage bins, I stained one side of them with special walnut stain and that will end up being the front of the boxes. And now it's time to add our Aztec inspired design. So I measured and marked the center of the front of each of the bins and then I laid a strip of painter's tape horizontally across. And once I had that one straight, I could use it as a guide for the rest of my tape. So I taped three strips above and three strips below the center strip, leaving a tiny sliver of space in between. So I ended up with seven strips of tape in total. Then I measured and marked the following measurements, which indicate distance from the outer edge of the bin to each point, and then I connected the top point to the bottom point with a diagonal line on each strip of tape. Then I went in with my X-Acto knife and cut along the diagonal lines and peeled away the excess tape. After that, I cut out little triangles for the top and the bottom, and then I smoothed everything back down. Then I used my foam roller to carefully paint over the painter's tape, making sure to smooth it down with the roller as I went along. I painted one full coat and let it dry completely before going back in with a second coat. By the way, I have a furniture painting tutorial on my blog which shows you how to get a really smooth professional looking finish, so I'll link to that below. When the second coat of paint was still damp, I went ahead and peeled the painter's tape away. I like to do this when it's damp because I've found that if you wait until the paint is completely dry, sometimes the tape pulls some of the paint off with it. I've partnered with Frog Tape in the past and I love using their tape because check out those crisp lines. After the paint had dried, I went back in with a polycrylic top coat and I recommend two to three coats of this total. Then it was time to add the hardware. I like to use painter's tape to mark the holes and then use that as a guide so I know exactly where to drill. And I added these handles dead center to the front of each of the storage bins. And I'll link to the hardware I used in the description box below. Next, I added the little furniture feet and then I was done. If you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you haven't already. And now here are some outtakes. <laughs> In the meantime, no, no. I'm falling asleep. I'm falling asleep. All right. <clears throat> Subscribe and hit the bell, bell icon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh. Okay. So done. Oh my goodness. The guy without the cheeses. Nothing. Go close the door. This is a little bit of a different video. <laughs> In the description box below. No. Tech design. This is a little bit of a. <laughs> okay. I need to sneeze. It's not coming out. What do you need? Excuse me, is that how we ask? Please. with an Aztec design. <laughs> Jonah, stop. You're doing it on purpose now. Oh my God. Thanks so much for watching. I'll be uploading new videos every Thursday, so you can check back next week. You can also find me online at erinspain.com and on social media at Aaron Spain Blog.